the baseball team lights up the scoreboard versus Seattle U. And there's a new athletic director in town. Stay tuned for all that and much, much, much more on this edition of Inside the Lines. Good evening and welcome to Inside the Lines. I'm Riley Corcoran. And I'm Michelle Ledka. Thanks for joining us tonight live in Studio A here in the Merle Complex on the WSU campus. We've got a good one for you tonight, so let's get right to it, Riley. Well, after much speculation and anticipation, the Cougar Nation finally got their man. A week after former athletic director Jim Sturk announced his plans of departure for San Diego State, WSU found their replacement. Former University of Oregon Athletic Director and WSU alum Bill Moose was introduced as the Cougs' new AD today. Moose has a great reputation in the sports world and has the resume to back it up. Under his tenure at Oregon from 1995 to 2007, Moose oversaw 13 Pac-10 championships across six sports. Moose also initiated a budget raise from $18 million in his first year to $40 million by his last year with the Ducks in 2007. In 11 of Moose's 12 years with Oregon, the Ducks led the, Ducks led the Pac-10 in football attendance, reaching 100% of the seating capacity in each of those 11 seasons. So, Michelle, I have to ask you, with the new change right away, how do you think WSU did with their hire? I think they did really well. I was actually at the press conference earlier today where Moose spoke, and he had a really good outlook for the program, um, or all the programs, the school in general. He said he wanted to get rid of the term Cougat and doesn't want us to consider ourselves the underdogs anymore, which I think would be really good for all of us. I would definitely have to agree when it comes to that because they really need to get over the underdog role and get out of the cellar when it comes to the pack thing. Exactly. All right. Well, the men's basketball team was looking to break their losing streak. The Cougs took the court last Thursday night, hoping to replay the Bruins for their loss handed to them in their last meeting. <laughs> in the first half, Malcolm Lee of the Bruins has the ball. Lee passes it off to Dracovic, who drives it in for the dunk. The Cougs are quick to answer back, though, as Xavier Thames hits the three. That was one of the three three-pointers made by the Cougs out of the 19 attempts in the game. Reeve Nelson's with the easy lay-in. Now, what was that move? Doesn't Dracovic know this isn't soccer he's playing? Well, it didn't seem to phase Thompson as he drained the three. Not so lucky this time as UCLA steals the ball from Thompson, bringing it back down the court with the pass off to Nelson, who makes the bucket, but in turns falls flat on his face. Now this was no silly slip up. Nelson came down so hard, he cut open the skin around his eye. Now, ugh, that is a good amount of blood. He's not too quick to get up now. I wouldn't be either. But the real question of the day is, was that bucket worth the blood on the court? End of the game now, and it's almost as if the Cougs have completely given up. The fans seem to give up too, as the Bruins took this one 71 to 51. Coach Bone had this to say about his young team's performance after the game. Uh, yes, I know. Too often, to where I, I'm starting to anticipate it. I mean, yeah, they're great guys. I mean, they're a really good group of kids. They're, uh, they seem like a very sensitive group. They're young, but in their own way, I think they're trying. And maybe it's me. Maybe it's I haven't gotten their face more and challenged them. But uh, again, I'm not coaching any different tonight than I was last week, and our guys came out and played pretty well. So we had a bad night. In a nutshell, that's the deal. We had a bad night. That disappointment on Thursday, it's time for WSU to go back out to Beasley and see if they can put on a better effort against USC on Saturday. Try to avoid that weekend sweep by the LA schools and end a three-game losing streak. Let's get to the highlights. The pep band in full force. Xavier Thames getting things started with a 12-foot jump shot over Mike Garrity. 
And then Reggie Moore finding a slashing Marcus Capers for the two-handed flush, and the Cougars built on an early lead. Clay Thompson struggled all day long, but his teammates were there to help him out, and Abe Lodwick tips it to Capers, and he goes in for another dunk, plus the foul, and the Cougars regain the lead 20-19 late in the first half. How about a little defense? Garrity tries to drive on D'Angelo Castro, and he says, try again, and he swats it away. Take another look with the clock winding down in the first half. Castro helps the Cougs maintain a 23-19 advantage. Second half now, Reggie Moore finding a shot for two of his team-high 12 points. Abe Lodwick misses the wide-open three, but he follows his shot with a nice lay-in, and he had a huge second half. Check this out. In the defensive play of the game, James Watson gets way up and rejects Leonard Washington's layup as he goes into the stands after that effort. In a game that didn't feature much offense, the hustle plays were the difference for WSU. Now in crunch time, it was all Abe Lodwick with the shot fake and the 15-footer, <coughs> and then Clay Thompson right here getting his passing skills on, finds him in the corner, and he buries the three-pointer. And then just to put the icing on the cake, the young freshman Reggie Moore banks in the three-pointer to put the Cougs up by four, and they held on for a 51-47 win over USC. All right, well now let's take it out to Marissa Huck, who caught up with Abe Lodwick earlier to talk about the game coming up this Saturday against UW. All right, well, unfortunately, we didn't get that to you right now, but we will get it to you as soon as we possibly can. We will switch gears up. Riley, you want to take it away to the women's side? Yeah, the women's basketball team switching gears now. The women's basketball team took a road trip down to L.A. to take on Pac-10 foes, USC and UCLA over the weekend. The Cougs look to get back on track against USC after getting throttled at home last week versus Stanford. And that's exactly what the Cougs did. Led by 11 first-half points apiece from standout freshman guard Kiki Moore and sophomore guard April Cook, the Cougs took a three-point lead into the locker room at halftime. The Cougs held on to a slim lead for most of the second half until they broke the game open with five minutes to go. Over that stretch, Wazoo outscored the Trojans 11-2, making the final score 64-52. Here are a couple fun facts for your viewing pleasure. The Cougar victory marks the first time that the Cougs have won back-to-back Pac-10 road games since the 1995-1996 season. Also with the win, the Cougs ended an 18-game losing streak to the women of Troy and recorded their first victory in the City of Angels since 1999. Both Kiki Moore and April Cook finished with 18 points, respectively. Next on the schedule for the women was UCLA. Unfortunately, this game was a much different story for the Cougs. After WSU jumped out to a six-point lead, UCLA stormed back to take a 16-point advantage. That lead was cut in half before the intermission, though, thanks to Danielle Lenore. Eight points in the final two minutes. Excuse me. June Doherty says she thinks the team handled their runs in the first half well, but ran out of gas in the second. She continues that it didn't help that the Bruins were more physical than the Cougs were in the trenches. The team needs to learn from this game and do a much better job of boxing out. Now, despite the ups and downs, the Cougars ultimately fell 93-58. to Carly Noaz led the way for the Cougars, scoring 15 points and ripping down five boards. In addition to her eight points, Danielle Lenore added a career high of eight steals. Next on the schedule for the Cougars is a matchup with rival University of Washington. Tip-off is scheduled for 2 p.m. this Saturday at Heck Ed. And I think we have that Abe Lodwick interview for you we tried to get to earlier, so let's go to that right now. You're sick. Mm -hmm. You told me you had strep and a stomach virus. Um, how have you made that transition from getting well? Because you played an amazing game at USC last week. Um, how was the transition with that? Um, really, being sick, I just couldn't hold down food for a few days, so I just needed to buckle down and get some food and water in my system. I just felt terrible for a few days. Um, as far as affecting my game against USC, like I, I'd, I'd long felt better since then, so I was just coming out and just trying to play hard. So you're, so you're okay for the game against UW? Yes, I am. How are you preparing for that just individually as a team? How are you guys preparing for the UW game? Uh, individually, I mean, since our last game where we got beat real bad, I've been keeping that in the back of my mind. I think most of us are. Um, so we got to come out and understand, like, we can say it's a different game, another game for us. At the same time, we understand, like, the implications, and we just want to come out and play really hard and make Cougars proud. Do you do anything before the game with a team, sort of like a pregame ritual to get yourself ready, especially for the UW game? Is there, do you guys do anything different since it's a big rivalry? 